Let's talk about a subject that is near and dear to my heart, something very important. The topic of good songs by bad bands. Related to, but not the same as the topic of what we call GGBB, good guys, bad band. You know, if you know people in bands, this comes up all the time. You're like, man, I love that guy, but his band is horrible. They suck. <laughs> Not exactly the same thing, but related. So that is what we are going to talk about today, starting with Danzig. I have talked about Danzig many times before. I know that there's some Danzig fans out there. I don't understand why, because let's just get it out there. Let's just call it what it is. Danzig is terrible. In the chat here, you consider Danzig a bad band? Oh yes, I consider Danzig an absolutely awful band. And after you listen to this, this is not an example of the good song, but just for anybody who may not be familiar with why I say that Danzig is a bad band, listen to this song. But first, I want to thank Factor for sponsoring this video. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. So it's clean eating made easy, which is perfect for me because I care a lot about what I eat, but I also don't have a lot of time to cook. You may have heard people say that fitness starts in the kitchen and it is true. And with that in mind, Factor has keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, and vegan and veggie options, which includes seafood, meat, or plant-based meals. And it is super convenient. Factor meals Meals arrive pre-packaged and ready to eat in just two minutes. It's honestly way faster than getting takeout or having something delivered and it is healthier. You don't have to stress about what to eat for breakfast, lunch, or dinner or staying on track with your diet goals. It is just easy. For me personally, I work a lot and honestly, I also just kind of hate cooking. So I love that when it's time for lunch, I can just run downstairs, pick something from the fridge, heat it up, and I'm good to go. It's super convenient, but I can also know that I'm hitting my macro goals. I am sincerely a fan of Factor, and if you want to check it out, just head to go.factor75.com slash fin120. There's also a link to that in the description of this video. And use code fin120 to get $120 off. That is go.factor75.com slash fin120 to get $120 off. For anybody who may not be familiar with why I say that Danzig is a bad band, listen to this song. It's just one example of many. And look at, I love how in all their videos, he always has like a babe and his taste in women is really funny to me because it's the most like basic i mean like what you like i don't care but he just loves the most basic type of women you know this like barbie look is clearly what he's into <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder what she thought We're like what's a dancing why do you want me to be in this video it's 500 bucks a day all right fine all you people in the chat who are saying oh you think dancing is bad that are defending dancing how can you defend this And you know he has, I like this shot here. This, There we go. This is, <laughs> look at that. I like that one. And you know that he has some sort of like long-winded explanation for what the uh, mirrors symbolize or whatever. Um, and it's four minutes of this. For anybody wondering why I think Danzig is a bad band, that is why. This would be a good example. I don't get it. I really don't. I guess if you're into like, comic books and big titty goth girls, which is probably most of the people that watch my videos. I suppose I understand it from that perspective, but on a purely musical basis, I, I don't get it. I mean, Danzig is like mid bar rock. You know what I mean? If this, if he wasn't in the misfits and they didn't have a cool logo, uh, I can't imagine anybody would actually like them on a purely musical basis, but I will make one exception, which is dirty black summer. This song is a fucking banger. Very cool video too. Super, like, creepy. Now look, what, what you don't know is Danzig is so short. This rock is only three and a half feet tall. That's Danzig up at the top. This shot makes it look like he's standing on top of a mountain or something. Not true. It's just a boulder. Danzig takes himself more seriously than any human on Earth has ever taken themselves. Great riff, great drumming, Chuck Biscuits very 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 underrated drummer nothing fancy but man the guy grew so hard 
love this song. It's so sinister and catchy. Exactly. He's like a comedian that doesn't know he's a comedian. He's like Tommy Wiseau. Glenn Danzig is the Tommy Wiseau of metal. That's what it comes down to. It is. It's a great riff, a great groove. Can't go wrong with this song. Ooh. What is it with gothic people and the gloves? Like, goth people love fingerless gloves, and I don't get it. What is the scenario where you uh, need to cover up your palms, but not your fingers, if you're in the satanic desert? Yeah, oh yeah, maybe they're bag gloves. Maybe that's what they are. Bag gloves or MMA gloves? I don't know. Either way, yeah, he's kicking, kicking that sand in your face like, beat it, nerd. Can't you see we're making a video here? I guess maybe they are bag gloves or MMA gloves. Why do you need to be wearing these uh, bag gloves out in the desert when you're standing on top of a pile of sand? I'm confused. But the song is good. I like this shot here. Everyone in the band just standing around awkwardly here. Like, you can tell this guy doesn't want to be there. He's like, oh God, this is so fucking corny. I need a new job. Why is Glenn so weird and corny? Why does he always take his shirt off? Why do we have to stand around here in the desert while Glenn acts weird? His vocals are legitimately the worst part of the song. Yeah, this song, like imagine this song with a better singer. It'd be amazing. Oh, those are MMA gloves or something because they have like knuckle protection, but the palm is open. So there you go. He's ready to go, buddy. Whenever you're ready to go, he's ready to go. Out in the desert on a video shoot, it doesn't matter. He's ready. You want to do this? Let's do this. He's that guy. Come on, let's do this. Let's dance. He's that guy. Gets in your face at Buffalo Wild Wings. You're watching UFC at Buffalo Wild Wings. He's the guy in the bathroom. He's like, you fucking looking at me? What the fuck are you looking at? And you're like, I'm just waiting for the bathroom. That's right. That's what I fucking thought. And shows you his MMA gloves to let you know he's ready to go. Stanced up. Out in the desert. That's Glenn Danzig for you. This is the first Danzig song I heard, I think, and I was really expecting them to be good based on this. And then every other fucking song I heard was horrible. Just horrible. Definitely the sort of person to get kicked out of an Applebee's at 11 p.m. Yeah. Do I enjoy any Misfits song? Of course. The Misfits are awesome. All the, all the Glenn Danzig Misfit stuff is fucking great. I've heard enough Danzig this stream to last a lifetime. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's time to move on. I, I have heard enough Danzig for one lifetime, I think. All right. A band that does not get a lot of love from anybody other than me. Maroon 5. Very underrated band. Now, I will say most of their songs aren't great, but you know what is great is this song. This love. Not a Pantera cover. Look at Adam Levine there. Man, this girl I used to work with years ago. Uh, told me once that I looked like Adam Levine and I was flattered. She was wrong. Uh, maybe I look like Adam Levine's ugly little brother that uh, never leaves the house, maybe. But I was still flattered that she said it. By the way, listen to that snare. Oh, the subtitles. I like that. I don't. I didn't know that I had subtitles on, but I like that. The fire burning. It, somehow it makes this song just like 10 times more corny to have the subtitles on. Oh, I got to give him some respect for the wrist accessories, though. You guys know how strongly I feel about wrist accessories. Uh, a colored bandana. I don't know if it would be at the top of my list of wrist accessories. Obviously, the leather wrist cuff is number one. But I'll take it. At least it's some sort of wrist accessory. Sounds like the 1975. And you guys know that I love the 1975. Ooh, man. Lucky her. She got to roll around mostly naked with Adam Levine. What I wouldn't give to be in her shoes. Untattooed Adam Levine. The man got tatty blasted 10 years later. He said, you know what? I want to look like I'm in some uh, shitty OzFest metalcore band from 2004. I'm going to get tatty blasted in 2019. His uh, stage presence here is kind of reminding me of the Hinder guy. I I'm not into that. 
I object to that. I'm a fan of the boot cut jeans, the white belt, you know, the early 2000s drip. I, I want that to come back. I'm on board with that. But his hinder like sort of stage moves, not on board with that. This is true. Say what you want, but at least Adam never left his band to go solo and he absolutely could have. We salute you, Adam. That's right, he could have. I mean, does anyone know anything about anyone in Maroon 5 other than Adam Levine? I don't think so. The man could have left all those guys high and dry many years ago, but he didn't because Adam Levine is a top tier bro. I can tell. I've never met him. I don't really know that much about him, but I feel like we would be friends. So Adam, you know, if you and Sugar Ray are ever hanging out in Hollywood or whatever, and you want someone to uh, hang out with at Buffalo Wild Wings, eat some nachos, watch a UFC or something, let me know. I come down to LA fairly often, and uh, I feel like the three of us would make a good team. I would be the ugly one, the ugly poor one, but you know, somebody's got to fill that role, right? I mean, every friend group, there's like the ugly one that makes the other people look good, right? I could be that for them. Not that Sugar Ray or Adam Levine need my help to look cool. I think they've got that covered on their own. But I'm just saying, if you guys ever need, you know, an ugly friend to tag along, the offer's out there. Adam Levine and the Maroon Fives, exactly. Charlie Puth was masturbating to this? Tell me more. Pounding sand. Look at that. Everyone in this band looks like they bought their wardrobe at Target. <laughs> but it's a good song. I'm a fan. It's true. So far, both of the videos we watched have had a lot of sand in them. It's the common thread. It's sand. What happened to bands having like an organ player? I feel like the early 2000s was the last time that like a piano or organ was featured in a band. I don't know. Uh, this is a very Target song. You're right. I'm a fan, even if Maroon 5 may not be the best band in the world, but I like that song. Another band of this era, I know you guys know that they would be on the list. No sand in this one. But we gotta talk about Nickelback, Rockstar. It's a pretty damn good song. I don't think Nickelback is a great band. The biggest punching bag of the 2000s, for sure, and 2010s. That was like Kendra from What's the Playboy Show and Gene Simmons. Paul Wall. My man, Paul Wall, or as I like to call him, Pow Wow. Pow Wow, baby. What it do? My man, I definitely would like to be friends with Paul Wall. I, this facial hair, it was a questionable choice uh, even back then. I don't know what he was thinking with that, but I am a fan of Paul Wall. I would like to be his friend. Somewhere between Cher and James Dean is fine. There we go. I forget this guy's name from uh, Orange County Choppers. I just recognize him from the meme. You know, there's the, the meme of the people arguing. That's where I recognize him from. I've never watched this show. I just know him from the meme. Chuck Liddell. I'd sort of forgotten how country-ish this song was. Kid Rock. Is that Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Is that him? At first, I thought he was just some random person that, like, someone said there might have been a contest because he's so awkward on camera. At first, I thought he was just some random dude uh, who, like, won the contest, and then I realized it was Dale Jr. This video is quite bad, though. I remember this video as being, like, a star-studded, you know, high-energy kind of thing. It's actually terrible. Ted Nugent. You guys know how much I love mid-2000s culture. And this video is like a time capsule of the mid-2000s. So I'm on board with it for that. It's like a video year book in high school. Exactly, exactly. I gotta also give a shout out to the drum sound in this song and on this album in general. Uh, this album is held up as one of the examples of great drum sounds and production in general in modern rock. And I will tell you why. Listen to the fucking drums in this song. Uh, this song is horrible. But the beginning of it, holy fuck, this is one of the best drum sounds you will ever hear in your life. Oh, let's listen to that again. God damn it, those drums.
Oh, fuck, that sounds good. God, I remember when this came out. I just randomly downloaded it and listened to it um, just because why not? And I was like, holy shit, what is this? This sounds fucking amazing. That's right. The song, I forgot the title of that song. I forgot. Follow You Home. And remember, this is the same band that has the song S-E-X and the one about like, I like you better with your pants around your knees and whatever. Full of weird, super creepy song titles and lyrics. So uh, the fact that they have a song called Follow You Home, a little weird. Is that Post Malone? Holy shit. Wow. Who knew that Post Malone was in Rockstar, was in the Nickelback video before he got all those tattoos? Amazing. And there's Chris Barnes. Oh my God. It's Chris Barnes from Cannibal Corpse. Holy shit. Who knew? What a crazy set of cameos. Who knew? You don't think that was Post Malone? Um, I don't know. Maybe... I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, you're right. That's Zach De La Roca. You're right. That's not Chris Barnes. That's Zach from Rage Against the Machine. Well, speaking of Chris Barnes, you guys know how I feel about Six Feet Under, I hope. Um, a horrible, horrible band. I'm sorry, Marco. Marco uh, plays drums in Six Feet Under. Solid guy. I know he watches sometimes. The band is absolutely horrible. I mean, horrible. Listen to this shit. I really legitimately have no idea how this was released. It's that bad. <laughs> this is so bad. Pick up the pieces of my destruction. Pick up the pieces of my destruction. It's so bad. Jesus. But they do have one song that I actually like. I heard it on Headbangers Ball or something in like 2004. And you're right. That isn't even close to the worst. They have worse songs than that. That's just the one that came to mind. But I do like this song, Bringer of Blood. This is good. That's a great riff. Kind of reminds me of Obituary. Groovy riff. And he doesn't sound like shit. Imagine going to a fest where 90% of the people <laughs> like this music. Imagine the smells. Oof. And it's Europe, so... That tells you a lot. It's not bad. I mean, I'm not going to say this is the best thing in the world. But it's pretty damn good. I gotta say though, the level of drip on display here is just shockingly bad. Imagine getting the opportunity to play to whatever, like 50,000 people or however many people are at this festival. You act like it's still 1991. The black cargo pants with the combat boots and the long sleeve with your flying V. I mean, do you have to be that guy? The only thing that could have been worse to make his level of drip even lower is if he had uh, gone full death metal and wore the uh, shoes for Cruz. <laughs> this is the ultimate death metal shoe, my friends. If you want to make sure that uh, everyone takes you seriously as a death metaler, you got to wear the shoes for Cruz. That's how people know you're legit. Solid song. I like it. The McDonald's shoes. Exactly. Again, I'm not going to say this is the best thing I've ever heard, but it's pretty good. Certainly a lot better than anything else the band has ever done, right? All right, well, moving on. How about this? You guys know Crazy Town, right? Butterfly, Toxic, Dark Side. I gotta admit, I kind of love Crazy Town. Are they good? I don't know that I could say that they're good. I mean, part of me wants to say that they are. I don't know, but I will say... I did listen to a lot of Crazy Town. Not when they came out, though. I got into Crazy Town in, like, 2008. I first, I started listening to it ironically. And then I was like, hold up. I actually like this. I have become a sincere Crazy Town fan. So I became a non-ironic Crazy Town fan around the time that this song came out. Starry Eye Surprise, which is Paul Oakenfold featuring Shifty Shellshock of Crazy Town. And I thought, oh, my God. This is going to be the worst thing ever because Paul Oakenfold is like the corniest, you know, house DJ of all time. And I thought, this sounds like a joke. Paul Oakenfold and Shifty Shellshock 
oh my god what is this gonna be and i actually heard this in a coke commercial i went to go see like wedding crashers or something like that and they were playing a diet coke commercial with this song in it and i was like oh actually um i love this if you haven't heard it you're about to and you will understand why i love it because it is great Summertime hit. Yes, this song is the soundtrack to the first time you take E and kiss a raver girl. Perfect way to put it. Tell you what, for all of you who think you're too good for Crazy Town, let me ask you this. How much would you pay just to smell his finger? Let me ask you that. Imagine the places that finger has been. Just think about that just for a moment. Imagine the incredible, magical places that his finger has been. Beyond your wildest dreams, that finger has gone to places <laughs> that you could never even dream of. How much would you pay just to smell that finger and just get a little whiff of the adventures that it has gone on? I don't know the number. It's going to be different for all of us. But it's a pretty high one for me. If you didn't want to look this way, oh look at this, uh, look at this e girl here. Look at that. There we go. She only gets to be in the video for like two seconds, but peak e girl right here. I, you know, here's the thing from the chat here. I will say about Crazy Town, they look like guys who would be the most misogynistic dudes possible, but this song and Butterfly were love positive tracks of so props for that. It's true. That is a very good point. And I want to do a podcast with him. What has Shifty Shellshock ever done to deserve all the hate that he got? What? So the guy smoked crack on TV? All right. I wouldn't say that. We should look down on somebody for that. He had a drug problem, but that doesn't make him a bad guy. Lots of people have had drug problems. You don't like his haircut or his tattoos? No, you're jealous. You're jealous because of where that finger has been. That is the reason why everyone talks shit on Shifty Shellshock because they wanted to be him, including me. It's on the trails we play. The walls are closing in, but that's okay because I've been waiting all week to feel this way. I just want to live in this video. I want to look like this and I want my life to be this video. That's all I want. People fear confidence, exactly. So when you're as confident as Shifty Shellshock, people don't understand how one person could love themselves this much. He is the real life Giga Chad. That's right. Well, let's move on. How about, uh, let's talk about Hollywood Undead. I non-ironically love this song, and I like this whole album. But as Welcome. much as I want to love the rest of the band stuff, it's not good. As an example of what I'm talking about, for anybody who may not be familiar. the holy hour. This shit is so bad. Ugh, they seem like great guys. I support the band, but this is so bad. Just the most uninspired butt rock, you know? I don't mind butt rock either, but this is just terrible. So if this is the Hollywood Undead that you know, I don't blame you if you think the band sucks. Because this stuff is not great. But early Hollywood Undead, the old shit, like this album, Swan Songs, and the demos. The demos are terrible, but in a good way. This shit is great. Exactly. The old stuff is cringe, but great at the same time. I know a couple girls with Hollywood Undead tattoos. Wow. Uh, I'll say this. <laughs> if you know a girl with a Hollywood Undead tattoo, or a guy with a Hollywood Undead tattoo, but I will say this. If you know a girl with a Hollywood Undead tattoo, that girl fucks. Let's put it that way. That girl is a professional level fucker. <laughs> you can count on that. And you, you notice that melody, right? Crazy Train. Any girl with a Hollywood Undead tattoo fucks. That's just a fact. You can count on that. It's unfortunate that this is uh, censored because the lyrics are very cringe. An interesting anecdote about this song. The director of this video is Jonas Ackerland, who directed Lords of Chaos. He also directed the movie Spawn, which I love. And he was the original drummer of Bathory. And I remember reading an interview with him about this video where he was basically saying like, this was like one of the worst things that he ever worked on. And it was like 
so horrible to work with them because they were so out of control and like fucked up and partying all the time and it was just like a disaster and i gotta say you gotta give them some credit for that because you know that if you have offended and pissed off the drummer of fucking bathory the guy that directed spun if you're partying too hard for that guy that's an accomplishment so i gotta give him some credit for that i'll say this um, I do not want to smell any of their fingers because I have a pretty good idea of where they've been as well. Uh, and, uh, I don't want to smell their fingers for some reason. Shifty Shellshock's finger. Just I'll sniff that like fine wine, Johnny three tears, Charlie seen. I don't want to sniff those fingers. No, thank you. I'll pass on that one. I don't want to know where they've been. It's better if we don't know. But as far as like late 2000s scene party anthems go, this is one of the best. So there we have it. That does it for this edition of great songs by bad bands. There's many more to come on this list, but we'll leave it at that for now.